Hello and welcome to my first devlog of a new Roblox game I'm making named It's a Trap. This is this is a video where I'll be explaining what exactly my game is going to be, how I want to format it, and a little progress that I've been doing. So make sure to comment down below if you like this devlog and want to see more of this game. And Without further ado, let's get right into it. In this video, I will just be explaining what I want the game to be and showing some basic progress, basically what you see here. So, let's get started. So, here I am in Paint 3D, and I will explain what I want my game to be. So, first of all, the name of the game is It's a Trap. And the reasoning for this is, basically, you are a player that is put into a randomly generated maze, as you saw in the clip beforehand. So, this is my maze. And you can spawn in random places throughout the map. And your ultimate goal is to escape in the middle. But, if you just escape off the start, you won't get anything. You won't progress through the game. So, the point of the game is, in corners of the maze, there will be these little chests that you will collect to get money and like cosmetics and like upgrades and more traps and whatever and the whole point of the game is since each player has traps you can for example trap one of these chests so you can catch a player trying to get some loot and when you kill someone you'll be able to collect all their loot that they had during this round and so this is sort of a style game like vigor or escape from tarkov if you've ever seen a game like that where you basically drop in you have to collect whatever loot you can, and then you leave. But it's up to you when you want to leave and how much loot you can get before you can leave. So, that's the basis of the game. I hope it's not too boring or simple, but, you know, we'll have to figure that out. And But the whole I driving idea is I wanted to make some traps because that sounded pretty cool and procedural maze generation sounded pretty cool because I don't like building my own maps so if I just make them if the map makes itself and it also makes the game a lot more replayable than it would otherwise have been so that's the basis behind the game the actual mechanics of the game like the traps or the traps and the maze will stay the same I think but I'm open to change the chests and the way people do things like originally i was trying to style this game like a murder mystery type game where like the, you have certain trappers and people who have to collect the treasure but i think i like this idea i think it should work pretty well i've been looking through roblox i don't think there's a game like this out there yet there's definitely maze games but not true procedurally generated maze games so i think it should be fun so make sure to comment any feedback on the name or the actual game idea, but let's get straight into the progress. So I started out by making a chest model because as you know from my Roblox showcase, I already made the procedurally generated maze script. So now I just had to move it over to a new project. So I started making this model to get some nice art around, around me as I'm working on the code for the project. And I think it turned out pretty well. Okay, so you saw me in the last clip creating a chest. So off camera, I have programmed it, some basic functionality, where I can create the chest and then toggle its opening and closing sequence. So let me show you. So here it is right here, chest. And if we wait a few seconds, it opens and then it closes. And that works super well. I don't know when I'm going to use this, but it works and it looks cool. And that's all that matters. So then I started programming the spawning for the chest in my maze module. And this went along pretty smoothly. 
because I could already use functions that I had. And yeah. Okay, so I did some work off camera, and now rock spawn as well as the treasure chest, and the treasure chest face the right way. So let's play this. You can see the start over here, and once the maze is done, you can see there's rocks everywhere, and there's these nice, cute little little treasure chests. Except this is a problem. Rock spawn inside of the treasure chest should be a pretty easy fix, but I gotta actually figure out how I'm gonna do it. And I also need to figure a harder fix is going to be how to get these rocks to spawn more towards the sides because some of them like spawning in the middle makes sense but i need to add some sort of weight to them so they spawn on the sides next to the walls instead of in the middle of wherever because it kind of looks stupid sometimes but yeah and i did a little bit more work off camera this is just a little bit and i finished maze generation and just like that, maze generation is done. So I've been doing a lot of work off camera in regards to spawning. So if I run this, you can also notice it's a bigger maze. First thing you'll see is that the start of the maze will always be in the center or rust center of the maze. And so we'll finish running this. Maze is a little bit bigger, so it takes a little bit more time. You will see all of the little items that I've chosen to spawn in. So what happens here is for every face of a wall, a rock will spawn. And these are actually really cool. The way I did this using C-frame object space. It's kind of complicated, so I won't get into it. And then the, I use the same thing with the torches. Torches are kind of messed up right now. They can spawn inside the rocks, but I can fix that pretty easily. And torches look pretty nice. They're kind of stuck inside the wall. And I think you've already seen the chests. And the rocks spawn no matter what. But the torches have like a 10% chance to spawn. Chests have a 25% chance to spawn. If they're in a corner with three adjacent tiles. And you also notice, if I go out a little bit, these white spawns. So... I'm experimenting with them. These, I think, will be the places where the players will spawn. So they'll all spawn around here. They'll have to collect their chest. And then... They will have to go to the middle. Uh, sorry, my game just froze. Don't know why. Um, and then this will be, like, the exit point where they can leave and take all their loot. So I think maze generation is done. There's something things I don't like. Like, rock spawning I think is fine, torches are super messed up. Oh, there we go again, my game froze, don't know why that's happening. Um, but yeah. So, let's just take a quick look at my code, because now, I am done with all of the maze generation. So let me just show you again, so you can see. A few things I've added is there's now like a border wall that goes around, but it counts as the maze. So rocks spawn on, on them, and you have this chest that can spawn there. And the white spheres that denote a player spawn are now, they have to be like 10 st studs. I guess you could say it's 10 cells, is a better word, away from the center point. One thing that I want to do is make an open area in the center point, but I'm not sure how to do that without fundamentally changing the maze algorithm or making it look ugly. Like, for example, it might leave, like, standalone blocks just in the middle of nowhere, and I really do not want to do that. But 
Let's go look at the code. Here is my maze class in all of its glory. This is all I've been editing. And there's a few interesting things I've done. Like, for example, up here, I've created my own distance formula. This is a common math formula that I use to find the distance between two dimensional cells in my maze array. And I use this, let's just go down here. When I filter the passages from, like, I get all the passages for the maze. And this is in order to generate my spawns, which are the white spheres, which will be where players will spawn in. And I have a function that this function uses to check if the distance is greater than, let's just say, 10. Then I'll do this. Whatever. And a lot of this stuff down here is just visual. I just pick something random. So this code is a little too complex for me to go over in full detail. Like, this is the rock code. This is a really nice snippet of code. Let's actually go to this function. It's attached to wall. Let's go see where it is. Um, here we go. Where we take our wall position, the position we are starting at, and the X and the Y of the like position on the wall, I guess you could say. And I just use relative C frames to orient a C frame towards the wall and then use an, an offset to attach it to the wall, and then you can pick the X and Y. And yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's basically all the code, and I just run it from a server script. Let me show you, it's in server script service. I create a new maze, I generate the maze, I generate the items. Items are torches, rocks, and chests. And I generate the spawns, which are the white spheres. So that's about it for the programming. So, that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this first Roblox devlog. Make sure to give me your feedback in the comments down below. And I'll see you next time when I make my next devlog. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe if you do. I hope you have a nice day. And, goodbye.